And this is obviously what he meant. You son of a, uh, of a lady who is not even a full human being in the civic sense of the word. Your mother was a, a, a mother out of slavery. In reference to the Sindhi mother that the Imam Zaid had from Sindh. You weren't here <laughs> comment. Uh, so, uh, and then he gave him a very see. This is where this is where you really begin to um, uh, to measure a person's um, wit and um, presence of information. He he said to him, uh, "There is no one in the sight of Allah who is more noble and honorable than a prophet." And there is a prophet of Allah who was born from the same mother that you are referring to. And he's, he's, what he's talking about is Ismail, who was born from Hajar, who was an Amma. And out of that came the best prophet of the world, who is the prophet Muhammad. When he gave him that answer, of course, what are you going to say? He's not, because this guy, you know, he speaks like a king. He hasn't been. He, his mind hasn't covered this territory, and all of this is just, you know, uh, almost like a verbal slap in his face. What are you doing over here? Uh, I just told him get out of here, and then that's how, that's what happened. He just told him get out of here. There was no discussion of any matter, or anything. Just get out. And then Zaid said, uh, "I will leave, but I'm going to leave to a place." that is not going to be to your favor. Of course, he took this as a threat. Uh, the the, the um, inference is, yeah, I'm going, but I'm not going to where you want me to go. Um, the Imam Zayda obviously came under official harassment from now on, wherever he went, in Medina or in Iraq. Um, but he had made, it seemed like at this time he had made up his mind. It's either he's pursuing this truth, uh, uh, this course of action that he is, he is on is legitimate, it is right, and if that's going to lead to death, then that's, what it's, that's what's going to happen. He went to Al-Kufa, of all places. He went to Al-Kufa incognito. Um disguised, he didn't want anyone to know. Uh, and then the Shia of Iraq began to come to him. And he, um, he took a bay'ah from them, a pledge of allegiance. I wrote it down. Uh, it might be a little long to go through the details of it. But basically what he's saying is that I call upon you um, to enlist in support of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, and a jihad against a zalimin, and a uh, support for the mustadhafin, and to provide for those who have been um, dispossessed and to redistribute um, the revenue uh, with equality to the people and to um, uh, put an end to offenses that are taking place. Uh, basically, they, if they agreed to that, he would take their hand and he, he would hold their hand and then he would move his other hand over theirs as a, an expression of this bay'ah. And he would say, Allahumma fashhad. Or oh, Allah bear witness to this. And would anyone know the number of people who gave him the bay'ah? Anyone have a slightest idea? Kufi giving him the bay'ah. Yeah. On the second time in 50 years. Yeah, he went against the advice. There was his his own family told him not to do that, but he still 
this was an issue of family, it was an issue, it was just an issue of his, his pursuit. But anyways, the, you'd be surprised, the number of people who gave him bay'ah was in Al-Kufa itself, and we're not talking about later on, there are other people who would come, come along and also <coughs> add their bay'ah to this. But the people in Kufa itself, there were 15,000 men who gave him the bay'ah. And then when, the, uh, when everyone else heard of this taking place, they began coming from different areas, and the number grew to 40,000. 40,000 people who gave al Imam Zayd the bay'ah against the Umawi monarch. The others came, of course, from other parts of southern Iraq, basically. Um, and Imam Zayd, in the middle of all of this, was advised by those who knew him very well uh, not to proceed with this, because they knew, everyone knew what this was going to be. It was going to be a confrontation, a military one, between two sides. And uh, there, were, there was a, um, a sort of uh, public um, notion that Ahl al-Kufa and these people are not going to come through. This bay'ah, whatever it means to al-Imam Zayd, no one had any expectations for it. Uh, so he, he had planned for a confrontation with the Umawi army in the month of Safar, in the year 122 of the Hijrah, of course. Uh, and then here, when, when this Hisham ibn Abd al-Malik in Damascus gets news of these developments, he alerts his um, his governor there in southern Iraq. What, what, what's going on there? I mean, were you, are you absent from this world? Look what's good. Look what's happening. You better, you know, you better move. You better begin to move. You know, the military against him before this thing gets out of hand. Uh, but first, uh, uh, express to Zaid the possibility of diffusing this without a military encounter. But if he refuses that, then we have no choice but to um, duel with him militarily. Uh, as this was, as these dynamics were in place, the people who gave an Imam Zaid the bay'ah, they began to act in another manner. Imagine, this is what's going on. Remember where we are, 